Hello and welcome to an expanded version, I think we can say, of the Donahue Group. Uh, we're here on election night with live election coverage uh, from now until about 10 o'clock. We're broadcasting this evening from the County Administration Building on the corner of 5th and New York Avenue. A beautiful building and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I want to uh, welcome our fellow panelists and you are all fellows and so it's going to be just a great night. Um, to my far left, Ken Risto. Uh, who voted today, I think, as all of us did. Uh, Ken is the social studies person for the Sheboygan Area School District. <laughs> uh, sitting next to Ken is Tom Paneski, our Republican, suitably dressed in black for tonight. <laughs> Tom is a professor of mathematics at the, the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan. Our dear friend Cal Potter could not be with us tonight, but we have a swell substitute. Replacing You're replacing yes, you Cal. Oh, it said, now the pressure is on. Now the pressure is on. This is David Gallianetti. David uh, is on the Sheboygan Area School Board, uh, where he is currently serving as vice president. Uh, uh, David is the director of communications at Lakeland College and a former journalist, and uh, brings, I think, a, a good perspective to all the things that we're going to talk about tonight, which are going to be considerable. We're going to be talking about local races, state races, national races, all sorts of different issues that have uh, come up as we have uh, uh, voted today as a country. So uh, turnout has been great. Before we get started, we're going to go back into the clerk's office and uh, talk to Julie Glancy, who's our clerk of courts, and learn a little bit about the process and how the votes come in, because that's why we're here tonight. So in a very graceful way, I'm taking off this microphone. It's like a seasoned veteran. Isn't that great? It doesn't get any smoother than that. And uh, we're just going to walk back. Um, Barbara Walters. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like I, I work with the sassy crew, what can I say? But following back, we're going to go uh, to the uh, county clerk's office in the uh, uh, first floor of the administration building. This is a beautiful building which was built just a few years ago to house all the administrative offices for Sheboygan County includes the Clerk of Court's office, the Register of Deeds, we all know the Treasurer's office, the uh, County Administrator, and a lot of other offices. But come right in right now, and we're going to uh, talk to Julie Glancy, who actually is uh, in a race tonight for a County Clerk, and we'll talk to her about all of those things and see how she's doing. So, welcome. Here we are. <laughs> This is a room where I have spent uh, quite a few evenings over the course of the years watching the votes come in. You can kind of wax either sentimental or eloquent about voting in the United States because we don't do it often enough and it's full of lots of problems. But in my mind, there's nothing more exciting than watching the clerks from all over the county come in here with their boxes of ballots. And Julie's going to tell us a little bit about how they get registered. We're going to look at the computer where we can see the results coming in. To me, it's exciting and it's affirming of the American experience. And I think that's probably enough Abraham Lincoln for tonight. So, <laughs> Julie, I'm just going to scoot over this way. Sure. Let me introduce Julie Glancy, who is the county clerk. And Julie, you've got an election tonight. Is that correct? That's correct. But you're unopposed. I am unopposed. It was a tough campaign, but I think I'm okay. We talk a lot about having contested races, but when you're in the office, it, sad to say or sorry to say, it's nice. To, <laughs> it's nice not to have any opposition. Tell us just a little bit about what happens here tonight. Okay, the clerks and the poll workers from the various polling places throughout the county bring all their election results and ballots in here tonight. They need to, you know, have finished all their paperwork at the polling place and then they come in here. When they come in, they'll register at the desk over here. We take the prom packs or the results cartridges from their voting equipment and in the corner over there is the, is the computer station where we enter that result into the computer system. All right. And then, as I understand it, then those results show up basically on, on the computer screen over here. Now, I see only one computer tonight. Did you take one screen away? There's one in there. Okay. All right. But people also bring in the paper ballots, don't they? Yes, they bring in all their ballots. They are sealed in the ballot boxes, mm -hmm. and we store them in our back room. For, and for an election like this one, we have to keep those ballots for two years. All right, because we know that recounts can happen, and, and they can be pretty complicated. Um, lots of new rules that the county clerk has to follow under the new uh, Help America Vote Act, or HAVA as it's called. Can you just briefly tell us what's involved? Uh, has it made it any more complicated for you? Uh, is it a better system? Are we getting more bang for all the buck that the bucks that the federal government has put in? 
Well, I don't know if there's a short way to explain HAVA, but there are two main components of HAVA. One is the requirement for the statewide voter registration system. The other is the requirement for handicapped accessible voting equipment. All right. The handicapped voting accessible equipment is a very expensive proposition. That equipment, you have to have one machine in every polling place. I don't know that it really improves the, the service to the general public. It is a, a, a good service to someone who is visually impaired, for example, because they can listen to the ballot so they can vote independently rather than having to have someone read the ballot to them and mark it and maybe not be sure that they're marking it the way they, they really want it to be marked. So for people with visual impairments, it is, it is a good product to have in place, but it doesn't really improve you know, the way 99% of the people vote. They're kind of unaware of that system. Okay. There is, there's additional expense and additional problems for us in programming that additional piece of equipment. The biggest piece, though, is the statewide voter registration system. Right. That's a huge project. We've been working on it for a long time. This is the first really big election that we've been under this system. Um, I think that in the long run it will be a, a good system because you will have a database with everyone in it. We found a couple people who had voted for years in the wrong place because, you know, they live right on the line and, you know, but now that we're in this system and you can actually look at address ranges, you can make sure that people aren't voting in the right place, the right school district and things like that. Now there have been some concerns nationally about um, uh, touch voting and, and electronic voting and the, um, the sanctity, if, if you would, of the security of those machines. Um, do we have any issues like that here in Sheboygan County? No, I don't think we have those issues in Wisconsin in general because okay. Wisconsin requires that any touch screen system have a voter verifiable paper trail. So anytime that you vote on that machine, there is a paper record of how you voted. The states that have the issues are states that don't require that. So all you have is what's stored in the memory of that computer. And anybody who's ever had a computer crash knows that, you know, there can be issues with that. There can, <laughs> there can be, yes. <laughs> you know, and we've already had issues with even the the Eagle Prom Packs where someone has dropped it on the way in and the results are gone, mm -hmm. but we have the paper ballots, you have a record of how people voted, so you can um, you know, always recreate those results. If you don't have a paper record, that's when you run into trouble. All right, and we just had somebody, uh, a streaker come through <laughs> snatching, <laughs> snatching some candy. I will say for the clerk, come from as far away as the town of Sherman, I think, is the longest drive. It's a long drive for these folks to come in late at night, and there's always food out here, and yeah, I know. We're kind of holding back a little. There is more food coming, so. We well, you know, you've got the TV cameras, so you yeah. don't want these yeah. folks to have too much. <laughs> um, um, I was here uh, in September for the primary. Uh, it was kind of the kickoff for the new system, and boy, it, it took a long time. What time did you finally finish up in September? I left a little before midnight. We finished up shortly after midnight, okay. so we were pretty much done by then. The issue we had in September, which we are going to have again for this election, is in programming the new system, we are not able to electronically merge the totals from the Eagle voting machines with the ballots and the edge, which is a touch screen. We had hoped to have that problem resolved for this election. It's still not resolved, so we still will have to hand enter those results. So it, it takes a little bit longer. It's not quite as instantaneous as it has been in the past. All right. So maybe midnight tonight. Well, it's, it's after 8.30, and we haven't seen a, a, a polling place yet. And I think in September, we already had several standing in line by this time. Yeah, it, so. it, it, it has been busy. Um, any uh, idea of turnout uh, uh, during the day today? I was predicting about 80 percent. I'm hoping that it's going to be somewhere between, you know, somewhere around 65 to 80 percent. Wow, that's terrific. That would be great. All right. Well, Julie, we love your necklace, your <laughs> scarf, your pin, and uh, we've just got some nice flags here. So we look forward to working with you and sneaking in from time to time and seeing what the election Same results the are. <laughs> there you go. So thanks very much, You're Julie. Welcome. And I think we're going to just head back out to the uh, lobby and uh, take it from there. <laughs> I hope she hurries. Her, her, she hurries back. I was. We were just talking here uh, as we were watching the interview that uh, that kind of a uh, turnout, 80 percent, sixty five, seventy percent. I was really. I'm really surprised to hear those kinds of numbers. I. Wow. Well, there's been some times in this county where I think turnouts. You know, when I covered a couple elections for the paper, where it was as low as you know, fifteen or twenty percent. So. 
80 is. Yeah, if, if it's 80%, that's, that's got to be a record, I would think. I don't even know that presidential elections get 80%, 60 and 70%. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking too, and I was very surprised that, um, I know there's a lot, a lot of people engaged in the process this year, you know, the two referendum, um, one is advisory, but the other one, of course, is, is for real, and amending the Constitution of Wisconsin. Um, that certainly has got people generated, and we know we're going to have a, a close race for governor, uh, okay. by all indications. Um, I, I think the, uh, the amendment, I mean, more people talk about that, that marriage amendment. They, I was at the uh, Marshfield campus uh, on Monday, and they were they were having uh, sessions, uh, give and take sessions with uh, faculty and students, talking about the pros and cons yeah. of the amendment. So I figure that's going to affect uh, uh, those people who are anxious and get out and vote. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was the same at, on Lakeland's campus. We had a forum uh, last week. Um, uh, four different faculty members from different disciplines, religion, psychology, sociology, um, history, and I think actually criminal justice was one, there was five, who just gave in uh, informational presentations about, um, you know, what it would mean, you know, the historical ramifications, et cetera, et cetera. And the room was filled really with was. college students. <clears throat> so, um, How often does that happen? Uh, you yeah, know, and, and they didn't get convocation credit for it, which was even more amazing. <laughs> so I, I think clearly it's got everybody's attention. It's such the only thing I, my feeling though is it's kind of disappointing that it takes. It's a real emotional issue. People are really passionate about it, and it's a shame that people can't get emotional and passionate just about the individual races. It takes. You know, and a lot of people think it's a gimmick. A lot of people think the GOP forced it through to get more voters out, to knock Doyle out of office, whatever. But clearly it, it motivated people, and it's too bad that people can't be motivated just to vote for governor or to vote for your local state senator or to vote for whoever. It takes something like this, an emotional thing. Maybe it's yeah. a good thing, but to me it's yeah. kind of disappointing that people don't have that same excitement and passion for just voting. You know? Yeah. Well, and I think if you heard the Welcome interview, back. yes, I'm <laughs> glad that the three of you managed to carry on without me for that brief period of time. Yeah. But Julia indicated that she thought voter turnout of 65 to 80 yeah. percent, which yeah. is one of the reasons it's 10 to 9. And I think we've just had one clerk go through, and I know, um, I know uh, Trina from the uh, town of Sheboygan Falls. So it's even no city uh, places in yet. Julia indicated that we'd be here uh, not not live TV coverage, but that we'd be here until uh, uh, probably midnight, if, if yeah. not even longer, because of just the, the new system and trying to yeah. merge the, the ballots. So Did you say an electronic voting system, a touch screen? Right. That's for the county, that's not for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, it is for the, each polling place now in the state of Wisconsin under HAVA is required to have a touch uh, screen, handicapped accessible voting machine so that people who are handicapped or disabled can vote independently. So at the place where I was doing some poll monitoring today, the poll workers told me that uh, uh, somebody who was uh, uh, visually impaired came in and he was able to go to the machine and, uh, uh, and it, it okay. talks the ballot through. Mm -hmm. okay. Now there were some glitches with it apparently and so he ended up getting some assistance from somebody else. But they had about 80 people who just volunteered to do the touch screen uh, balloting. It does take longer. I was watching because, you know, you go through, if you've got a big ballot like we did today, you go through screen after screen after screen. Okay. And um, so it takes longer than just connecting the, connecting the lines. But uh, it was interesting. Okay. The other piece okay. of it that's kind of important, as Julie explained, is that there's a paper backup. So unlike okay. machines in other states, where you know the Wizard of Oz could be in the machine, or Bozo the Clown, or you know Tribbles, or whatever. Here, at least in Wisconsin, we have we have the the, the um, assurance of a, of a paper ballot. So, I think in some respects that's that's better. So I think that gives people a lot of assurance. There's lots and lots of nervousness about computers, whether those are well founded or not. You know, nobody right. really knows at this point, but. Um, I, I was, uh, when she was talking a little bit earlier about the Wisconsin registration database, mm -hmm. is, that, is that used or implemented only when someone comes in to register to confirm that they are in fact a 
Well, I think this is the whole controversy about the Accenture contract that the State Elections mm -hmm. Board, um, well, actually Kevin Kennedy, and then post hoc, the, the Elections Board entered into with Accenture, which is uh, one of the, um, uh, uh, I think it only has one other state now. It's just not been apparently very effective in terms of coalescing, bringing together all of these registration lists. Exactly how it's been done or whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we're way past the time limit, but so are many other states you know, because it's a complicated process. So it wasn't, isn't, it's not being used in this election? It is. It is. It but is. the reason I'm asking is because I'm just wondering when does that kick in? Because when, when I, where I voted, which is something out of Norman Rockwell, um, you know, I really, really, I just, I don't really, before we go any further this evening, you really should acknowledge not only the people that are traveling, you mentioned the, the, the clerks and the officials have to drive in, but all these folks that are there at 7 o'clock in the morning and they're working the polls and uh, I see the same folks, at least at my polling station, more or less the same time. Alderman Jim Graff happens to be working down in my, in my area of the world. You know, and it's, it's only, only in Sheboygan where I can walk into a church basement and the first thing out of the woman's mouth is, oh, it's Wayne and Beatty's boy. You know, I don't even have to identify. <laughs> There's no need for me to pull out any yeah, registration yeah. or identification. They will highlight my name. And, and I, got, I, was, uh, I yeah. voted about 2.30 was the first chance I got. And I got hollered at for being late. Um, so <laughs> by a woman who was much older than me and I wasn't about to take issue with her. But I, they really work hard. Yeah, and, uh, they do. Uh, they do. I said that I would... Uh, but, uh, oh, I guess, I, anyway, the oh, point was, go I ahead. Mean, maybe because they just knew me. I mean, I didn't get a sense that anybody was, you know, checking the database to see if I was a registered or... Uh, well, the lists are there. Okay. I, I mean, they're not... Oh, okay. To it, but yeah. those lists are new lists. Right. Oh, all right. Because they, they always have had those lists in front. Right, the old kind of computer, you know, right. green right. paper right. princess. Right. That was, that was, that yeah. Was no, the, those yeah. lists are all in place. Okay. And um, I think from what Julie was saying is that that part is working pretty well. Merging the uh, touch screen ballots with the other ballots is what has it is taking some time okay. and here come some clerks in and you can see they've got their official boxes so well, you know okay. they're white boxes i would think that i, I guess i had this impression because i've never been down here before i thought they'd be metal and there'd be you know yeah, all sorts of serious yeah, yeah exactly something yeah. like the blues brothers or something yeah. you know they're, are pretty careful with these. Oh, I'm sure so, they are. Yeah. I'm sure they're very conscientious. But, uh, I'm just it's white cardboard <laughs> boxes. It's Some are a little different, but uh, in any okay. event, uh, uh, for for big elections, they also have these special carry carry things that you know, little carts and things that that they can use. Yeah. But uh, in talking with the poll workers, at least in my place, they said that they they were they were fairly steady and fairly busy. Uh, people didn't have to wait too long. No, I showed up at 2:30 in the afternoon, which is kind of a downtime. What, I was num in, what number were you? I was about uh, 495 or 450, something like okay. that. Now the poll that I was monitoring uh, today, um, I went back around 7:30 just to check to see how they were doing, and they had had over 1,200 people. Yeah. Oh, wow. And okay. they Which, had. Where is this? This is at. Um, this was at Ebenezer. Okay. And uh, they, these folks, it would appear have been there many years. Mm -hmm. The same in my yep. polling place, um, but. Uh, I mean, they've got it down to a science. The message they wanted me to convey is that uh, it would be great if people would register before voting yeah, day. Sure. Yeah. Because really, you, even the part that I was watching, um, it got backed up at the registration table. Right. There were really tons of people wow. who were registering. That being said, That's great. each person who did come in went through that whole registration process, which under HAVA now, I mean, there are two separate sets of criteria that you have to have to address when you're registering, and, and so it is more complicated than it used to be. But every single person was allowed to vote today, mm -hmm. and according to the the, per, the folks that I was talking with, no provisional ballots. That's a process mm -hmm. by which, if 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 you can't produce the registration information that you need to the satisfaction of the I mean, there's actually a flow chart. I went through some training about it, and it gets kind of complicated. You can cast a provisional ballot, and uh, which is counted later, um, but they haven't had to do that either. So, so I thought that was pretty encouraging, just in terms of, of efficiency of a system where, where our poll workers are. It's a, as you say, it's a long day, yeah. seven in the morning till past eight o'clock at night, with without much in the way of a break, and. Uh, so probably more, they probably start at six to yeah. set up, get there, make That's sure true. as the first person walks in. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So. But you know, I, I just can't help but think that with all the things that we can do electronically today, and we talked a little bit about this before, 
that you know perhaps in a smaller, more rural polling polling place, it doesn't make sense to invest a lot of dollars into the electronics. But as long as there's some kind of a human backup, a paper backup that somebody can look at it, we do everything electronically. We transact huge amounts of money. We make huge purchases. ATM. Why can't we vote? I mean, I, you know, there are geniuses out there who write computer programs for everything under the sun. Put them on this. Well, you gotta invest and, and, the money. And, well, and invest the money. We don't do anything more important in this country than vote. They fight wars over the right to vote. Well, so put the money into getting the technology or paying the people or what. It's silly to me. 20 years from now, you'll go in, put your fingerprint on the Seriously. electronic system. They'll register you. Then you we go could, vote. And we or could have scan. Uh, and or a retina scan. scan. Or a retina scan. And I'm not That'll a genius, but why, can't we, but why can't we have that technology now? I'll bet we could <laughs> yeah. if, so, if people were willing to spend the dollars. We spend dollars on everything else. Well, HABA was funded by some billions of dollars, uh, but it is a long, slow process because what you're doing is, as you know, as a local school board person, taking a very local activity, even though everybody has school boards, right. everybody has school districts, everybody has voting places, we all like to do things our own way. So taking something local and standardizing it at a state level and then even up after that is okay. pretty complicated. Yeah, but the, the, you, you know, you hate to make it too standard because uh, people like to get together. Voting is a voting day. You get together, you talk at, at it, uh, this congregational church they had all kinds of goodies out that you could buy. They had a bake sale, so if you wanted to vote and buy some goodies and then but talk to people. I can eat a muffin and touch a keypad. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it gets greasy. Stop it. Stop yeah, it. You, Stop it. And then I'll alter my vote. Yeah. All right, never mind. Yeah. You're well, the reason why your keyboard's always shorting up. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbs all over the thing. Well, we're not having much in the way of local results yet because we've had relatively few uh, clerks come in. Um, we're lucky that Channel 8 is getting really sophisticated, and we have Johnny on the spot, re uh, returns from, uh, from the nation. And um, we do have some uh, information about some uh, national races that have been called, which I thought I would run through. Did you guys talk about that while I was in the clerk's nope, office? No, okay. No, no, and you. Hey, before we go uh, move on, though, did we have a lot of absentee ballots? Did you get a chance to ask her? I didn't, but, <clears throat> but there are a fair number. Oh, they are. And what happens is that uh, those absentee ballots are delivered to each polling place. And then those are counted at the end of the evening and fed into the machine. Okay. Okay. Part of the problem, getting back to the machines again, which we've been on for a while, but um, because the ballots get folded, and this speaks to the wisdom of having an electronic system, although if you're voting absentee, I suppose that doesn't help. But when you connect the arrows in Sheboygan County, uh, when you fold them and put them back in the envelope, sometimes the, the black ink uh, get, uh, oh, wears it off, wears it off, off. and flakes mm -hmm. off, and so. In Our the, version in, of the hanging chads. Right. Well, in the live ham Baumgart <laughs> uh, recount, oh, those yes. absentee balance, many of them had to be hand interpreted. Sometimes people, although it says connect the dots, sometimes people put little X's. Sometimes they circle their candidate. They don't follow the directions, if you can believe it. Kindergarten well, class, just, oh, just didn't do teacher, it. Am I surprised to hear this? You know, put your name in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> Circle the dot. Yeah. Where? Where? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think you know those are some of the problems okay. with absentee ballots. But if there are a lot of them, and I saw at my polling place, they must have had a stack like this. Mm -hmm. So in the envelopes. So they open up the envelopes, feed them through the machine. So okay. it does take some amount of time. Okay. So. All right. Let's talk about races. Let's talk races. about races. Oh, okay. Now, called so far is they are calling Brown in Ohio over DeWine. I don't think that surprised anybody. Uh, it looks like uh, Brown will have 55% of the vote. Uh, that seems about, I'm just looking in my, have you guys no. been following the polls? Sure. Yeah, sure. The polling Brown data, you know, I just. Brown, Brown, Brown that, that seat was leaning through most of the polling I've seen over the last three or four weeks toward the Democrats. So that's, a, yeah. that's if it. that plays out, that's a seat that's going to go to, that's one Senate seat that's going to go to the Democrats. Right. And they've already called uh, Santorum, Santorum in Pennsylvania, right. they Pennsylvania did. Okay. As, a, as a goner. Um, so that's a second per seat. Percentages? Uh, you can't tell. Okay. Because, like you said, it comes in, it might be coming in from Philadelphia and, or Pittsburgh or someplace in 
but they already called the seat. So. Right. See, that's what's going to be tricky when you start watching the, the local, uh, your local networks on the governor's race and you see one candidate take a big lead over another. You really don't know what that means, if anything, unless you have some sort of polling model because, you know, if you mostly of them as urban areas. and exactly. um, I remember as a kid being tricked about that all the time, thinking my candidate was winning or losing miserably, only to find out it, get, it tightens up as the night goes on as the rural votes start coming in. I noticed, too, the, the national media, interestingly enough, um, was, I was kind of flipping around before I came in, and they're using two different sets of terminology now. Early on, they're saying our projected winner is. And, yeah. and at one point, one of the... Um, one of the people on one of the networks, and I can't remember which one, said, well, I think we've called that race. And someone said, no, we're projecting a winner. Remember right. the terminology? Sure. It's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. So they're, they're making a clear distinction between projecting a winner and actually calling the race. And, and I think, to their credit, and, and finally probably, they're being careful about, uh, they made a point to say, we're going to hold off on projecting in that race because the polls in that state haven't closed yet. Makes sense so to me. they, you know, because they got uh, the daylights beat out of them so often, especially for those West Coast races where mm -hmm. they would just, right. you know, two hours before the polls, polls closed, they're calling races and, you know, is it turning people away? I don't know if it did or not. Yeah. But uh, I think that the, the national media, at least from what I've seen so far tonight, is trying to be more responsible. They want to get the story, obviously, and if you know if the Democrats take control of Congress, um, they want to try to get that. All the networks want to be the one that breaks that story first, but I think they're doing a good job of being more responsible in terms of letting the process work itself out and reporting the news based on how the process works itself out versus um, getting the story first. Which is refreshing. I move closer to Tom because I, I want to be of comfort to him as he watches some of this <laughs> okay. stuff come in, my old friend. Hey. Thank this is my exactly. Irish, no, listen, my Irish sense of doom just makes me think that the Democrats are going to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I trust the poll. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, plus well, as, a minus, as a mathematician, plus or minus yes. a few, you know, I uh -huh. mean, turnout, though, will make a difference. And, okay. I mean, 50 yeah. 50, and then if one area votes 60 50, that, that heavier turnout is going to overcome the. Mm -hmm. the some of the great lines of the Senate have been reelected tonight. You know, nobody even knows. I think that Ted Kennedy was reelected this evening. They were saying um, before that a lot of people didn't even in his yeah. district didn't even realize he was up for reelection. Well, I think there's some people I feel that way about you know Herb Cole. We'll talk yeah, about Herb in a yeah. second, but okay. and uh, but you know Orrin Hatch, <laughs> Orrin Hatch. Ask around the room who was running against Herb Cole. <laughs> Bob. Lord. Yeah. Bob Lorgie. I yeah. know that. I saw a couple of Can anybody Lorgie. tell me anything saw, about him? No, I, saw a I have no clue. A couple of his signs in town, though. Related to there. Gerald Lorge, right? Okay. The Lorge, is that how you pronounce it? I think it's Lorge. Lorge? I, I think, think in Sheboygan it's called Lorge. I think it's pronounced Lorgie. 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 Because of the German. When you're not sure how to pronounce a candidate's name, he's in trouble. There exactly. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Well, with that in mind, we just watched Santorum's uh, farewell speech. and yeah. uh, His son didn't quite, look very happy. It's quite a. I mean, he was really one of the bright shining stars of the well, Republican in, Party two he, years he's ago. He's in a blue state, and he fr he won squeakers in his previous elections. Okay. And this is not a year for Republicans to run, so he lost to uh, a named person, Casey. I guess uh, Casey was a governor. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, he is a, a shining star in the Republican Party, but. Uh, but you got to look at. A blue state but you really got to look at it this way. You know, Pennsylvania lost a senator, but Fox got another commentator. Yeah. <laughs> so, ah, no, don't yeah. you think? That'd be all right. I, uh, I think that's probably. Watch and see if I'm not right about this. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Some other races. Maybe you'll get appointed to some place. You know, Bush will appoint him to some yeah. important position. Some other races to watch. <laughs> Ambassadorship. Right. Subtle. Subtle. Some other uh, races to watch. Corker versus Ford in Tennessee. And I know we'll talk a little bit later as time goes on about just the really scurrilous level to which political advertising has sunk, in my humble opinion. I don't care if it's business as usual. It's yeah. um, other than. I thought that was a cute ad. <laughs> which one? Call me, Harold. Oh, uh, <laughs> just stop no, but, it, Thomas. But, but everything before that was very good, you know, about the yeah. uh, uh, guns and uh, uh, they, they listed about four or five uh, positions that Ford took, and they made mm -hmm. they panned them. Yeah. And then of course they did the 
call me Harold on Playboy thing. Yeah. But. Uh, total receipts uh, as of the end of October, Corker 13 million, Ford 9 million. Um, it will be interesting to see as the evening goes on um, if the people win. Who win are the ones who spent the most money? Not necessarily. Um, uh, it would appear that... Uh, well, Lamont spent a heck of a lot of money, and he's not going to win tonight. Uh, Lamont spent, uh, yeah. as again, as of the In date of this, um, uh, $13 million. Lieberman spent $15.6 million. Um, so there are, we can see whether there's, a, there's correlation, if not causation, uh, uh, as between the amount of money okay, spent. There's, there was 51% of the vote in. It was 52.47 Corker. Wow. Okay. With half of the vote in. Yeah. Okay. There was there was That's some polling. Tough. There was some polling in Tennessee that that now whether it was a result of that particular uh, political ad, I don't know. Um, that was that was leaning starting to lean toward um, the, the Republicans. That was starting to pull away a little bit. Right. And then of course the other the other issue had there was the issue of polling data. How reliable is it? Because you know when you have a, an African American candidate, okay. how often are people going to tell the pollster, "Well, I will vote for him," but when they get in that privacy that that voting poll, whether they're really going to do well, that. They're really going to do that. They're actually yeah. pressing Senator Frist earlier tonight on you know, just his thoughts, of course, and, and whatnot. And um, of course, the uh, Chris Matthews brought the ad up and, and how Senator horrible, for a thought, how horrible he thought it was. And, and he said, "You know, Chris, you're making too much of it, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera." Yeah. But he did get Frist to say, "Well, I'm, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying I think you're making too much of it." And he mm -hmm. said, "Well." We agree on that, then. You're not going to defend it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like, you, know, you know, talking about uh, an African-American, I was thinking of the Michael Steele race in Maryland. I haven't seen any numbers on that one. I think no. that's a bright and shining star in the Republican Party, if he should win. Mm -hmm. he, I, he is just an outstanding person. Turnout in Maryland is uh, really, really high this year. From what, I mean, they is were it? saying, yeah. And, and everybody, of course, is saying, well, that's going to benefit. You know, both candidates are spinning that this afternoon. Uh, the last thing I saw, but it was really early on, was that Steele was behind in that race in is Maryland. It? Okay, I didn't but, okay. But the one, of course, that's going to be up, all, having us up all night, is going to be the one in Virginia where, um, you know, you got Allen and Webb. And last time we had seen anything, it was 66% of the vote, is in, vote was in, and there was only about 6,000 votes separating right. those two. Okay. Right. Well, and uh, I think if the Republicans right. lose that race, they're, that's, that's they're going to be, they're in trouble in the Senate then. Yeah. I think the McCaskill talent race in Missouri is interesting uh, as well and yep. I don't think that one's going to come in anytime soon so yeah. it's um, it's interesting there'll be at least a, a few more women in the Senate um, and uh, Amy Klobuchar is uh, winning in uh, or is expected to win in Minnesota Olympia yeah. Snow got yeah Olympia yeah. Snow got reelected tonight right. And I think in Texas, well, and that was a close race for her. The first Hutchinson, time. there was no doubt. Kay yeah, Bailey she was Hutchinson re that, yes. that she would win. Our but, good friend uh, Orrin Hatch from Utah was really elected. Uh, so um, interesting. So, and and uh, we should make, make mention of the president pro tempore, uh, the defender of the Constitution, uh, Senator Byrd, got reelected yeah. tonight. Yeah. So I think you know he's going to end up being carried out with his toes pointed out of that chamber. Uh, uh, I say it was his ninth term. Yeah, his ninth term. It's an absolutely amazing uh, run at the, in the Senate. <laughs> That's going to break Helms' record, isn't it? I think it is. Well, no, not Helms. Uh, who's the older uh, gentleman? Uh, that was Jesse. It, no, it's not Jesse. It's uh, the retired uh, Strom Thurmond. Strom, Strom Thurmond. Thurmond. He was a hundred-year-old senator. Yeah. yeah. Thurman was over 100, They just didn't right? want to, they said they voted him in because they just didn't want to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you lost him, just kill him. Yeah. Yeah. So that would kind of raise out the radio. But you know, our own Senator Cole is going to win handily. Yeah. Win yeah. handily, as, again. Uh, well, absolutely think, amazing. Are, are we going to be getting some local returns shortly, well, do you think? Or do you know? How part of it work? is the is it, what we're doing is, is watching or the, bringing them in. The, the clerks are coming in. I'm not seeing too many city clerks in yet. Okay. I've seen some... Um, uh, uh, county There's only been towns. About five come in. Right, so right. There's not much in. One of the reasons that we're down here tonight is that for the League of Women Voters, every election I come down and, and watch the ballots come in, and then I call into various, uh, the Wisconsin Election Service, yeah. just call in vote totals and such. It's a fundraiser for one of my uh, service clubs. And so I'm going to be tiptoeing off in a really graceful fashion, remembering, because you guys are going to remind me to take my microphone off so I don't <laughs> drag that and the chair and the cameras and everything along with me. Um, but I'll do that in a little bit, because they usually like to have the first returns in by about 9.15. But my sense is that there's probably clearly less than 25% of the votes yeah. in, I would say, yeah. right now. Yeah. Right, 
Would, and this is odd. I mean, even last, as Julie said, even in September, we had more clerks in here by 830 than, uh, than we've had tonight. Well, so that was the last time we had between 65 and 80 percent exactly. turnout. Exactly. Turnout. That's, exactly. I mean, it's a good, you know, in that sense, it's a good problem to have because, right. like we said, people are engaged in the process. Oh, and if you're, as you explained, if you're running absentee ballots at the end of the, uh, they'd run at the end of the night, you said, Mary Lynn? Yeah, yeah usually. So then you've got, you've got those to, if there's a lot of absentee ballots, you've got those to, sure. to maintain. And um, we're watching the results come in and, and, and so forth. Um, assuming that, let's assume for argument's sake, and this is my Irish sense of doom saying, don't even say it out loud, but let's assume the Democrats win the House uh, and don't win the Senate. She's gonna go outside and spit. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning the full moon. Um, yeah. What do you think it's gonna mean? What, well, I mean, how is the, I mean, obviously we will not have the, the, um, uh, the, the bus is not going to be running down the track quite as fast as it, as it was, but uh, what do you think policy-wise, what kind of initiatives will be different? I don't, Roberta gave me some numbers on the S&P, the change in the S&P in the third term of a presidency. So, so third, third year of the presidency. Tell us who Roberta is and what oh. the S&P is. S&P, Standard & Poor's uh, Index for the uh, uh, Just a, uh, stock a broad, market. It's a broad stock market index. Uh -huh. Yeah. And my, Roberta's my wife, but, uh, and, she's stock stock, and she's a stock she, owner. She must be obeyed. <laughs> she must be obeyed. <laughs> I understand. But, uh, they they had some history, you know the the third year of a presidency. Uh, generally, no matter what the the breakup of the House or the Senate, if it's all one party or split, or the presidency, you know, if it was all Democratic with a Republican president, the change in the Standard and Poor's the last two years is not is pretty consistent as far as the economy goes. If it's if it's a split, uh, it's a little lower, you know. But if it's a unity party, all Republicans or all Democrats, it's a it's a little higher. And the reason they suggested that is because people are positioning themselves for the next presidential election, and they want to pass economic measures which uh, benefit the country and benefit their reelection. So, as far as the economy goes, I don't know that it's going to make a big difference. I think there needs to be some. Um, imposition of um, some fiscal restraint? M might I suggest that if... Uh... Well, I mean, I think it just... I <laughs> I'm think sorry, Tom, I'm being very polite. <laughs> I, think, I think it just makes sense that for the next year or two years, you're going to see everybody kind of minding their P's and Q's because mm. they are setting themselves up for... Uh, whoever is setting themselves up for a run at, at the presidency. You know, obviously mm -hmm. we know that the Bush is gone. So um, everybody's going to be uh, doing whatever they can to um, warm up their base, get their base excited, um, but yet not do anything too dramatically bad so that they've earmarked themselves as the bad guy in the eyes of the other party this early. That'll all come, but you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be peace and harmony. Well, you know, you could easily say that if you know there's a Republican in the White House and. The Democrats are controlling Congress. There's not going to be much of anything that gets done. Just well, flashed the, up on the screen, if I can interrupt. Sure. Um, it's it's off now, but uh, they uh, had uh, Allen in at 50 percent of the vote and Webb at 49 percent. Oh, oh there's there. Kagan. What is that? 51 to 49. Uh, is Kagan winning? Yeah, and they All had right. they had Sensenbrenner winning. Sensenbrenner, I think he'll <laughs> he, win. They checked him off. <laughs> there's that. another one that no one's sure if he's even up for re-election. Re Oh, there the it opponent. is, the Allen Webb. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to scoot into the um, clerk's office, and you guys can carry on, as I know you will. Um, and I'm taking off my microphone <laughs> now so as not to upset anybody. But uh, uh, I think that, I think talking about the Kagan Guard race would be interesting. So I'll leave you with that. I want to talk about the governorship, but oh yeah, we, 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 talk about about, we haven't heard anything about the um, governor's race. The, well, the Kagan guard thing, I, I don't, you know, again, you really can't tell because of whose results. If that's the city of Green Bay, for example, right. and those are the results, then you would probably expect that to be leaning toward the Demo Democratic right. side, and we'll see how that goes. It seemed to, uh, you know, first of all, I guess we want to talk. Let's talk a little bit about the campaign. Uh, all right. I clearly negative both sides. I thought there was a really interesting ad that surfaced. Uh, in this this last weekend that led up to the election, it was a guard ad. It was you know one of those 
I read and approved this ad things. Right. And, it, and it was Kagan's peers, if you oh, will, yes. in the medical industry saying, uh, yes. we do something that Dr. Kagan doesn't do. We accept, uh, what was it, seniors? Medi we, we accept Medicare patients. Right. And he wouldn't do it. And, and we know that, that it's going to mean less money for us but it's the right thing to do, and Dr. Kagan didn't do that, and, mm -hmm. and it, it was pretty, pretty yeah, it was biting a little Phil, ad. Phil, let me ask you, what kind profits of profits over patients? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it was a very powerful ad because it, then it ties into the Dr. Millionaire one, which exactly, which runs and just spins in, it in the other money. direction. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What kind of uh, physician is Dr. Kagan? Can anybody tell me? I actually, no. I don't have no clue. I, I don't want to, you know, yeah. I want to be careful because we're on the air, but someone was indicating to me, and I don't know if this is true or not, so take it for 40 pounds of salt, was that he was a plastic surgeon. So you got to ask yourself, how many Medicare patients do you really think are going to walk through the door? If that's the case, it was okay. a pretty. Yeah. It was a pretty. If, if that is the case, that was a pretty misleading ad, but I think it resonated with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Well, it was his peers. You know, it gave you that impression mm -hmm. of, Geez, the guy's peers don't even support him. Yeah. Wow, what's wrong with this guy? And that's all those ads are designed to do is just put that little shred of doubt that, yeah. well, you know, I saw that ad and so and so said this, and boy, I don't know. He seems a little, he or she seems a little scary to me. I'll, I'll go with the other person. Yeah. That's all those ads are designed to do. Yeah. And, well, Kagan, had, Kagan? Yeah, he had an ad with seniors saying how well he treated exactly. seniors. Yes. So it was a counterbalance. Right. Uh, so, uh, Who's gonna? Well, it, it tends to be a Republican seat. Yeah. And uh, I think it would take a really a fairly large effort. Um, Kagan, I, I thought I thought for a while, you know, and I was I don't watch you know, a tremendous amount of TV, but I watched my fair share of it in the evening. I thought for a while there was a pause there where Kagan wasn't responding at all to the ads. It went for like three or four or five days, and I'm wondering, did he run out of money, or the D and I the the DNC certainly didn't run out of money. No. Um, but uh, it seemed like there was a pause there where I'm not sure if they weren't sure what to run or it, what the story was where I thought that Guard all of a sudden got a little bit of momentum near the race, but just for no other reason yeah. to respond to this stuff. What was a part of it perhaps that, you know, in Guard you have, um, even though he was a politician on a statewide level, you've got mm -hmm. a po he's a politician, he's a little bit more seasoned, uh, run campaigns before, again, yeah. perhaps not on that big of a level with those kinds of dollars, but... You know, I don't think uh, John Gard's uh, campaign coffers have ever suffered from a lack of money. Uh, whereas with Kagan, you know, if he loses today, he's going to get up and go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. If if Gard loses this election, you know, and, and it's and it's the story of every, you know, you, you go from the local politics and then you try your hand at the state politics and you get elected and then you are kind of a star on the state level and then you try to make your jump to the national level. Mm -hmm. Well, that first time there's an incredible amount of risk involved because if Guard loses, he's not going to get up and go to work tomorrow because he doesn't have a job and yeah. he's going to have to find some work. So I wonder if part of it was, you know, just for Guard, again, the seasoning of being a politician, he's been there before. But aside from that, maybe more to lose because longer term, I'm sure yeah. Guard has um, maybe a more articulated political career in mind. Whereas Kagan, not that he doesn't, yeah. but but Guard's been building for this for a long, long time, time. Yeah, a long time, assembly. and and boy, when you finally roll those dice, you better make sure you roll them the right way, so they're going to come up your way. Yeah. All right, I have some interesting results. They're so preliminary that they're meaningless, but still interesting. With five of sixty precincts in uh, the county, uh, Doyle fifteen eighty one, Green fifteen sixteen. So, so we can't even project a winner. On <laughs> we sure can. Oh. Which precincts? Can you have any idea, Marilyn? Um, I could, it would take me a while to figure it out. Yeah. But uh, I'm thinking some outliers because we've yeah. seen clerks come in from. Well, if they're outliers and it's that close, that's not good for or Green, green. In, in this right. county. Right. But Falk, 1493, Van Hollen, 1628. So that's. Those are, if those are outlying, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense if they're outlying. Yeah. yeah. Um, Local um, four precincts out of 43, uh, Libham's 1076, Aulik 740. Although Aulik needs to do better than that in, the, yeah. in Sheboygan, yeah. unless those happen to be wards one and two. Right. Yeah. Um, I did write down some other. Which are the north east side some of town. Other Sorry. results here, and I, I will find those as I. It's I'm like here. talking inside the beltway. Um, yeah. Oh, but did you, no, oh here, I uh, had, um, I had actually with, with, more, with more ballots in. Um, we had Ulick with 1753 and Liveham 2089. 
Okay. So at least at least uh, votes, Alec okay. is in the 45 percent range. Yeah. I mean, frankly, if Alec polls 45 percent, that's not bad no, that's for a newcomer good. against. Yeah. 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 I mean, I had a chance of waving at him. He was on 14th and Erie Avenue this afternoon, yeah. about 12, oh, about 10:30 this morning, I should say. I think that was him. Was so sure. you didn't have any like uh, Van Akron or Jose? Um, the Van Akron. So that um, would mean you have a city precinct. Right. Uh, Van Akron, uh, this is out only two of 19. Uh, okay. Terry Van Akron's getting 70% of the vote, Oof. and um, yeah. Job is, yeah. uh, Jose is getting about 30%. Okay. So, I mean, one thing that you have to say, and you may have been talking about this while I was out copying down numbers, is that um, both Alec and Leibham worked. I think Very hard. incredibly hard. Yes, they did. And I give them a lot of credit. I was um, delivering uh, uh, brochures for an unnamed political party, and I happened on three guys who were doing some siding. Uh, okay. And uh, I was handing uh, my little brochure out, and the guy looked at me and he said, Yeah, this guy was here yesterday. He was, he's not too bad. <laughs> and so I thought, Well, I thought, good. I'm, it really shows, I think, that, that people are working hard. I think I Alec think is going to do much better. Yes. I think in Manitowoc County, although I think <clears throat> Joe Leibham has been working hard in Manitowoc. I mean, he's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it, David, on the program in, mm -hmm. in past times. You can't find a, a finer constituent politician no, than, well, it, than Joe Leibham, and know, I give him credit when, for that. When you look at, you know, there's a lot of people. Not a lot. There are people that that obviously don't agree with all Joe's politics or people that don't agree with Jamie's either. But but the one thing you can't overlook with Joe is the fact that if you call him and you talk to him or one of his staff members and you ask for whatever, this information or this phone number or can you, it's going to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going yeah. to happen. And, um, and when we've talked about a recent poll that the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign um, either commissioned or put out indicating that 6% not 60, but just 6% of polled voters in Wisconsin think that legislators are working for their constituents' best interest. So you have a full, quick, 94% who think that they mm -hmm. are not. That is a stunning number. Mm -hmm. Lawyers are out of the cellar, folks. There's a, a breed mm -hmm. that's below <laughs> lawyers and used car salesmen. And um, so I, I think that the legislature, all, all political bodies, but I think Wisconsin has a, got a long way to go in terms of rebuilding and refocusing people's ideas and just the sanctity of the system and so forth. So. But, you know, I think, again, just like in Congress, I think when you ask people that general broad question about the legislature or about your lawmakers, they think about the institution and no one likes them. But when they come face to face with their local, their sure. local, their local lawmaker and the kind of levels of you know, constituent service that that they do, they're fairly, I think they're fairly happy. Uh, part of it may be because they really don't have a, a really strong sense about how their folks are voting down in Madison. I think if the Democrats wanted to be serious about mounting a serious challenge to Joe Lyman, they really need to look carefully at the kind of votes that Joe makes between, you know, the parades with the family and, you know, the visuals that he presents on the side of a van around election time. And that's just never been done. Uh, you had a you know, track record of four years. Alec, you know, tried to pin him down on a couple of, of, of votes, uh, to be sure. And I think he did a better job, and I think that's why he's going to do pretty well. Because he, he made it not about Joe and, and Joe's personality and, and Joe's obvious personal people skills. I mean, I've, like I said, I've, in the show before, I've talked to him several times and, and like him personally. Um, there's not, you know... But I think if Alec gets, like I said, if he gets 45 percent as a newcomer, that's, that's uh, very good. That's a very good. That's a very very good show. Yeah. Uh, but you know, as a voter, you you've got to cut. You know, well, when when you're running a campaign, when you're running a political campaign, it's it's like sending uh, it's like sending letters of reference for a job. Yeah. You're not going to send a letter of reference that's going to say you're horrible. You're going to ask yeah. people who are going to write. The, you know, they make you sound like the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, political campaigns are the same thing. If the only thing that voters are listening to are the messages that are being sent by the candidates, mm -hmm. they're missing most of the story. You know, the voters have to become more engaged and go out and do their own homework. And um, that's not easy. Well, you know, I, people I, don't have time and they don't want to yeah, and they I, don't know where to get it. And I, well, I watched the debates that were in 
Channel 8 uh, and played some of the debates. I wasn't there personally at the debates, but I got to watch it uh, uh, on Channel 8. And uh, I was impressed. I mean, I watched the live him uh, Alec debate, and uh, Joe, uh, when asked the question, gave a direct answer. He didn't hem and haw, he, mm -hmm. and he spelled out his position. Alec uh, is still not seasoned, so he was kind of vague on various things. So I guess over time he could sharpen his message, but if he gets a good number of votes, yeah, that's I think yeah, I think Jamie over time will develop some more polished skills. You know, I watched the debates too, because the three of us were. Uh, elsewhere doing some other kind of public right. service, but um, we were able to, I was impressed to, with with uh, how energetic, enthusiastic, is a little bit too strident at times. I thought his campaign literature was a little uh, difficult to wade through. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> and that may be because you're a challenger trying to convey a lot of stuff in a very yeah, short yeah, period of yeah. time or on very short resources, but it, it, it was pretty wordy, it was pretty tough oh, to get through. My oh my oh my. But I'll tell you, you know, <laughs> my you know, oh my oh my. I want to double back to the question you asked about, you know, in terms of Congress uh, and what's going to happen if the Democrats are in charge of the House oh, and the yeah. House and the Senate. I don't think, you know, obviously there's going to be uh, some people making their bones with investigations. There clearly will be more oversight. But the, the Democrats that are getting elected around this country, unless, unless it's Kagan, because Kagan's probably the most liberal Democrat I've seen running around here, but around the country, both in the Senate and the House races, are conservative Democrats. These are people who are centrists, and you know, um, Emmanuel uh, Rahm, Rom, our yeah, friend Rom. Um, who is in charge of the, the congressional campaigns, President Clinton's former uh, advisor, uh, deliberately went out and found veterans, deliberately went out and found middle of the road people mm -hmm. um, that could, you know, couldn't be portrayed in the usual way that that you know, there's Democrats are sometimes portrayed. And I think Jamie Olick fit that bill. Mm -hmm. You know, an Iraq mm -hmm. war veteran. He was for conceal and carry. He just wanted right. it much more stringent. Right. When was the last time we heard a Democrat say that? Right. And I mean, other and other things were typical parts of the Democratic program, you know, agenda uh, about guaranteeing tuition for kids with B averages and that, that sort of thing. Right. I think that's going to be the kind of Democrats you're going to start seeing coming out of the wood. Now, the progressive wing won't like that, but that's the way it's going to be. Does the progressive wing ever win an election in the U.S.? I wonder. Um, Not since Woodrow Wilson. Is so Woodrow Wilson or, or, uh, or Taft, but... Um, and he's a Republican, so... Yeah, there you go. But I mean, really, I mean, yeah. the progressive wing... Oh, uh, shucks. They just... Yeah. Uh, Cardin wins... Uh, Maryland? Uh, Maryland. Okay. okay. Never mind. That's so Steele didn't win. Excuse me for interrupting. Well, there were I just... folks who were running away from Steele uh, in the Republican Party. They found him even... A little, I know you like him, but... I, mean, I like him. He's a little, they said he was even extreme from their for their point of view. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't pay much attention to that one, so. Yeah. Well, it was kind of interesting early on, you know, everybody was kind of predicting that tonight was going to be the big, you know, Democrat yeah. sweep. Well, you know, in the days, probably this last week leading up, I think people have gotten a little more conservative, if you will, with, sure. with some of those predictions. Irish sense of doom. Perhaps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, well, yeah, you clearly, flirt with, if you flirt with a girl across the, you know, across the hall or across the room, and but eventually you go home with a girl, and you know, you brought. To but the you dance. know what happens? What <laughs> happens? You know, and I think that's what happens with now, voters. Is this, is this another of, Norman Rockwell right. comment well, on your part? Well, or? you know, it, it really, I mean, for well, a, a lot of independents to to leave uh, the Republican Party if they voted the last couple of election cycles for them, for them to really, yeah, when you get to that. Filling in the arrow, right? right. Pulling yeah, the trigger. Yeah. That's a tough thing to do. They're right. going to have to be pretty, pretty alienated or pretty unhappy. Well, and worst case scenario tonight for the Democrats is that they don't, they walk away without controlling either one. They just miss it by a seat. Exactly. Because then, where do you go? Where do you go from there? That this was supposed to be yeah. your night of glory. And all of a sudden, you walked away yeah. with nothing. Yeah. We just had a lot of clerks walk in, so I think fairly soon here we're going to yeah. have, uh, we're going to have some more votes. But Steve just uh, fed me some. Uh, um, some new statistics. Village of Oostburg, um, Attorney General race. Well, really? Do we have, do we yeah. have some? Let's see. Uh, Let's see, right? I'd like some percentage. <laughs> oh, I would think, I would think Van Holland I by 75% of I the I think vote. I saw okay, Falk well, in a coffee shop there a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. you've got 75%. 10 votes. I don't know. Van Holland, what percentage? Oh, uh, 80%. Really, 80%? Uh, I would say probably 80-ish. 84.4%. 15 percent okay. <laughs> for Falk. Uh, the, the three um, Democrats in Oostburg must not have been in town. Now today. we have some. Uh, we have some uh, uh, Sheboygan um, uh, words though with uh, Falk and Van Hollen. 
Uh, Falk 54% to 45% in Ward 3, that's my ward. Um, ward 5, Maybe for our 58. audience you should tell us who your ward, where your ward is, if not, don't, your re don't tell us your residence. But. <laughs> um, not too far from here. Um, Ward 5, 58% uh, for Falk, and Ward wow. 11, 57%. So the, city, well, the, city's, the, city's the city's Democratic yeah, wards are coming in. Yeah. 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 I think Falk is, you know, we're kind of jumping around here, but that's to be expected as these, these vote totals come in. But I think that, um, uh, and here are even more clerks, so pretty soon we're really going to have our votes in. Things are looking good here. Um, I think they're looking that like we're, they're, they're looking at us coming in and like we're the men, women and men from Mars. Yeah, so yeah. well, they've had a long, yeah. long what day because it's it's lobby. nine thirty. So oh, do you have live them in? Uh, no, um, and I'm on going those to same uh, wards. And be actually, well, I don't I, think Ollie got a vote in Oosburg. I mean, that would be like ninety nine percent. I got a few votes in Oosburg. If I can get oh, votes in Oosburg, uh, anybody okay. can get All votes right. in Oosburg. Not did many. Did people wander, <laughs> people of course, wander people, off a bus? Those people don't live in Oosburg anymore. Yeah, yeah they don't. They, they left with the guy who owned the be bar. Be gentle. Be gentle. You know, the wounds are hard to heal. Um, but, uh, uh, and now you've totally... We're talking about, we were talking about Falk. And, well, yeah. And ben, uh, ben uh, she's a, it's interesting because Barbara Lawton, our lieutenant governor, is... Uh, I've met her and I've heard her speak and her Wisconsin Women Equals Prosperity task force was hugely impressive in my in my opinion and produced some good results. You have Falk who I think is very competent uh, and um, these are two strong women who are you know in their 40s and I'll just say 40s I don't know if they're younger or older but I think clearly have a political future and uh, so wouldn't it be interesting if four years from now if Doyle doesn't run again or if he loses tonight oh. or whatever we have two women duking it out for the Democratic nomination. I think Kathleen running for governor really got her face out there and got people comfortable with who she was, even though she obviously didn't win. <clears throat> and I think that kind of inoculated her against some of the some of the accusations and some of the charges that, that were being leveled on you know in the ads. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, and I think that um, clearly the Republicans did not have as good an enemy in Falk as they would have had in Lautenschlager. It'll be interesting to see, uh, and, and I don't know if it would be an indicator for Wisconsin, but down in Illinois, the, the gubernatorial race in Illinois, where you've got um, Bar Topinka, uh, the Republican, uh, she's running against uh, uh, Blagojevich, the Democratic incumbent. Who's I'm impressed you can say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Illinois. pretty good. From Illinois. Oh, Illinois. From I, Illinois. I think so. they, they called <clears throat> it for... Blagojevich, didn't Did they? they? Yeah. Which is interesting because, you know, his campaign or his whole tenure is just dripping with corruption. And, I know. And, and um, whether or not he could survive, basically it was it was a night of survival for him. And if he did, that would be interesting. And what does that mean for, you know, is it, is it, is it an indicator that a state like Illinois isn't ready for she, a female she, governor? She, she called, uh, I guess she has a quote, a Sunday, she called Bogoyevich is, you know, is a loser, oh. just like the Cubs. Well, that's, she said, <laughs> just like the Cubs. They, they, asked, they, you know, they, they, asked her, they asked her what he could do if, if he lost the election. She said, well, maybe he can manage the Cubs because they're losers, losers too. too. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's just what we want to say. Yeah. That's like about as good as we're talking about running on Indian time. Yeah. We have Doyle uh, losing in the county, uh, 51 to 46 percent. Oh, that's not bad. Um, I don't know what precincts those are, so that will be um, that will be interesting. I'm going to give all of our clerks, they'll take about 10, 15 minutes to, to enter some of those votes, and then I think in 10 to 15 minutes we'll just have a much clearer sense of what's yeah. happening in... in um, well, it sense to me by looking in at what you've been saying is that we're seeing most of the outline areas are probably in already. That looks yeah. like a and lot And if of that's 5146 right now, that's uh, pretty, pretty good news if you're a Democrat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah I would have so. thought that Green would have done a lot better. Uh, yeah, in some of those rural really? areas. Yeah. Uh, the, the the polling I saw in Green and and uh, Doyle near the end was something along the lines of 48, 44, really, 43, okay. and then the remains were still undecided. So I mean, Green would have to get almost all the undecideds yeah. to switch his way. Now there yeah. is a theory that says if you're holding out to this point, you not, more often than not, you're going to go with the opposition. Right. You know, vote against the is incumbent. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. 
but I you'd think, have to get everybody. How can people go this long and <clears throat> not be decided? <laughs> well, I, I think these are your average folks who are busy making a living and they're busy paying bills and they really are okay. probably watching Dancing with the Stars and <laughs> yeah. and all they're getting is uh, the campaign uh, the right. campaign ads and right. what do you believe when you watch that back and forth right. back and forth? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you end up throwing your hands up and saying, you know, well, I don't know who. And then you wait for some sort of little thing like that, right. like you were talking about, like that doctor's ad, which I think really made a big difference. Right. Um, I think, and I think, I think Green just made a tremendously stupid mistake when he sort of laid out a trial balloon that he might challenge this election because of the Supreme Court not right. making a ruling. <laughs> Oh, who's advising him about that? Right. I mean, yeah. nobody wants to have a Florida exactly. here. Everybody's exactly. willing to say, you know, let's have a even a fight. Right. They had ugly fight in the mud, but right. at the end, there's going to be a winner, and you know, a recount's one right. thing, but another thing to challenge the whole election because the Supreme Court didn't rule on on campaign money. Right. I don't know who is advising him about that. I think some of it too. You know, the reason why it's easy to not. Um, to back somebody or pick somebody right away is, and, and going back to what you said, you know, 10 or 15 minutes ago about the, the high levels of voter dissatisfaction in terms of constituent service. If you called uh, Senator Leibam's office, you, the, the chances are fairly good that you could get him on the phone if you really wanted to. When, when Jim Baumgart was in office, Jim was everywhere. Yep. He had personal relationships with a lot of his with a lot of his constituents go to and, BJ's and, and breakfast with him right yeah. try to get um, try to get uh, Herb Cole on the phone try to get Senator Feingold on the phone try to get Sensenbrenner on the phone or Petri it's not going to happen yeah. try to get to them try to try to have any kind of real, not even necessarily a relationship but any kind of casual discussion it's only going to happen under a very controlled setting where they are dictating the message. You can't interact with them. You can't dialogue with them. I think that's where the huge amount of voter disconnect comes. They're unapproachable. They're, they're up there and you can't get to them. And I think a lot of people get, I don't know, yeah. turned off or annoyed by that because you never get an opportunity to really get to know who they are. I have to say, have you ever gone to one of Feingold's uh, little town meetings? We had one. We hosted one at Lake Yeah, yeah. what did you think of that? Do you think it was pretty contrived and pretty controlled? No. Because um, I've seen one or two, and I, don't, I, I don't, they were. No, I, I don't think they're. I think, Cole, never find I, I think they're, they're pretty approachable. But again, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a one-day setting in about a two-hour format. Yeah. Then he's, he kind of whisks in, and then he's gone. Right. Now, I give him credit for doing them. But in that sense, he's an odd duck. Yeah. At least you get that. Yeah. With the, most of these people, you don't get anything. Well, Tom knows as an alder person, that's the essence of local control. Oh, yeah. Nobody's afraid to call an alderman. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Anything. And nobody's about anything. <laughs> about anything. And, 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 or they anything. Stop you, they stop you on the street. And, <clears throat> and yeah. I need to talk to you about something. Yeah. 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 And they're not that afraid of calling school board members. They're not. But and, and nor should and nor should they be. No. Because I'm just like they are. I'm not any different than but anybody that's, that's else. That's local control. And, yeah. and, well, um, results on the marriage amendment, ah. percentages? Well, again, if we're talking about the outlying areas, I would say 65-35. I, yeah, I would say like at least 60-40. Yes. 75-45. 71-28. Oof. Yeah, I, as I said, these are the okay. outlying areas. That's true. Um, the rural I communities, thought it'd be a little, I would say yes. Yeah, and I don't know what, what they are, and like I say, in another five minutes or so, I'll Trust go and... the wisdom of the people. There you go. But, yeah, trust uh, the wisdom of the people. It's very well, Jeffersonian of you. <laughs> the I do, they do make. Yeah. The they marriage figure amendment. out all this yeah. in the bottom line, yeah. and they, they get right to the point. I think there was, and, and I, you know, getting back to that amendment, I mean, if, if you were looking at candidates and inf information you got about candidates in the ads, yeah. I think the media, and I think the debate about the marriage amendment at least was reasonably got the issues on the table. I mean, I think everybody understood that there was a reasonable differences about how to interpret the second part. Yeah. Um, I think there was. I think most people had. I think came to the polls with a with a sense of what it is they, what it is that was yeah. all about. Well, the death penalty really got lost in the shuffle. Isn't that amazing? Except you knew the but it was yeah. only advisory, correct? Yeah. So exactly. it was the stakes. But I mean, that used the to stakes be... are not as big though because yeah, it was right. only an advisory vote. Right. So. Sure. Whereas. The, the marriage one is, well, no, this it's is, on the this books. This is yep. Sheboygan County. Now when you get Dane County, you're gonna it's going to swing the other way, probably even way, more so. Yeah. More so. But, but one, of the, one of the interesting things to me is that it is, um, 
you know, they talk about activist judges. Well, there are activist judges who are progressive or liberal, and there are activist judges who are conservative. Um, I, Here's All the phrase. That, 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 a, sense. that a legal status Activist identical or substantially similar to that of marriage for unmarried individuals shall not be valid or recognized in this state. I'm telling you that's a full employment act for lawyers. That's a, when you say similar or substantially similar, you know, we're on our way to the races here. It will be, yeah, it's if this. It's going to have to be hacked out case by case and issue by issue. It really will. Yeah. I have represented people who are not married but who have contractual relationships. I don't know. They weren't identical. Were they substantially yeah, similar to that of marriage? Business, I don't know. Businesses and school boards, and they're going to provide benefits to I don't same sex partners. I, I don't think they just know better. Uh -huh. I mean, they know, you know, they're in it for a profit. Right. Or the school boards in it, you know, or things like that, looking, trying to be fair. Well, in um, uh, more central city uh, wards, uh, Ulick is holding his own with Libham. 50% to 49% in Ward 11. Ward 5 is 53-47 for Ulick. Ward 16, and I should know by now where all of these are, mm -hmm. but um, is 51% for Ulick. Ward 15 is 49% for Ulick. 50 percent for uh, He needs to be Lyman. winning bigger than that if he's actually going to win, though. Right. But, oh, but the fact that but he's, he's staying that competitive, block, right? yeah. Yeah. I, but, but this, I don't know, that's pretty good because uh, yeah. this is Joe's base. Right. I don't know, so uh, right. this is Joe's base, and if he, Joe is losing in his base, that makes it... Uh, in his first election, though, he won the city. Yeah, that's what I mean. He, did. he won the yeah. city, so this, this is... Uh, but right. he managed especially to run, good. I, I do remember he managed to run that campaign without ever using the word Republican. Yeah, this this is if Alex knew. winning in the city that yeah. that he made he made inroads, and then Alec has Manitowoc as another city to bring in. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, in any event, well, that'd um, be, that'd be we'll, we'll do. That'd as be I stunning. say, the 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 referendum, um, and th the whole concept of quote activist judges quote unquote I think has become very distorted but there are there are judges who are on both sides of the political spectrum and I believe that most judges they don't necessarily put that aside but they pay attention to the law and to the principles of law which is precedential paying attention to precedent and so forth I think most judges whether they're elected or appointed really have that level of integrity there are a few who don't but I think they're truly in the minority now, you may have a, a, a view of life that slants your decision making in one direction or the other, but this th th question one is, it's, See, it's, a, it's a legal minefield. It's, it's, it's going to be fun. Let's put it okay. that way. Let's, that's, that's the house. Those words are the house, and let's put the, you know, the furniture in the house, and I think it's going to be an interesting process. Okay, so, good. And <laughs> so, in any event, well, yeah. I don't know. That's get interesting. So, Sheboygan County is strongly in favor of the uh, marriage amendment. Well, and, and Carrie, bless his heart, is bringing these figures in, and I'm not sure how many wards are reporting, how many precincts are reporting yeah. um, that number, but, uh, and where they are necessarily. The computers in the clerk's office really break it down for you precinct by precinct, precinct. Mm -hmm. and um, town by town. And some towns have two precincts or two voting wards. Most have just one. Right. Um, the city of Sheboygan Falls has got, I forget, nine. Right. Um, and we have 16 right. uh, and we're here within the city. And so, so there really are, I think, 60 precincts altogether that um, some just have a couple of houses in them and so forth, so they're not really um, that strong, but in but, any But event. going back to Sheboygan County, uh, you know, I was, uh, they were doing uh, exit polling at uh, the First Congregational Church where I was, but oh, I think really? Sheboygan, yeah, Sheboygan County. Now, who was they? There was somebody outside the uh, poll. I think it was Channel 4. Okay. But, uh, uh, and I filled out the form. I, I participated. But Sheboygan County is kind of a swing county or a, be, a bellwether county. I mean, they voted Democrat. They vote Republican, where some other counties are always were Democrat right. or always Republican. Well, the city t t typically will vote Democratic, right. and the county but will as always a, vote as Republican. A, right. But as a group, there's enough movement that right. they go back and Whereas forth. It's like Ozaki's always going to be Ozaki's Republican. Ozaki's always Dem uh, a Republican. Republican, right. Uh, so there's some when you talk about the green and Doyle race to be kind right. of interesting which way the counties 
tipping. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, well, it yeah. looks like Senator Clinton has her race sewn up, 6929. <laughs> yeah. So the question here <clears throat> tonight was, you know, is her showing going to be strong enough to to make that White House run in two years? Oh, isn't that going to be just quite That'll be the really amazing, interesting. Yeah. the amazing process right. here and. Uh, I, for one, think that Barack Obama needs to spend a little more time in the Senate, kind of learning a little bit more before he uh, before he uh, launches off. And uh, I think there is something about the seasoning that time brings that. Um, I mean, this guy's pretty unseasoned, but. Uh, uh, and he's got a pretty he's got a pretty easy ride of it. Well, he's got no an easy ride kidding. when you go on a national campaign. Boom, -bidi -boom, -boom, they, boom They they you, you they pick you apart. Slice I mean, and dice. They slice and dice. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> No kidding. So it was interesting when Falk joined, uh, jumped into the governor's uh, primary so late and did really quite well considering how late she was when she came in. So uh, those spoilers are uh, kind of tend to be irritating. Let's talk a little bit. You know, we don't well, and there is Senator Barack Obama. Uh, just interesting. I. It's uh, we only have a f 15 minutes left. I told you the time would go quickly, I wow. and I wish we had a few more results for uh, for our audience. Although I'm sure that people who are listening to us have a few other things well, on yeah. as well. We can go back and before we go, kind of Take stand a on the board I, and get I, some I will stuff. do that. I will do that, and I should yeah. do that for the for the league anyway. Um, while I'm doing that, do you guys want to talk a little bit about? Um, oh, uh, thanks, folks. Oh, oh, very good. Oh, we've somebody. got printouts. These are like official. Um, campaign finance reform. <laughs> No, I don't want to talk about campaign uh, finance. Well, I'm, I'm appalled. I'm appalled at how much money was spent on the race. Um, Over the country, the entire country, two point two billion dollars. Two point two. Yeah, I mean, I, I got some numbers today. Two point, yeah, a little over two billion dollars in ad spending and. Um, yeah. Just in ads. We're not talking Just about in, streets. You know, right. We're not talking All about signs stuff. and the lawns and, and the flyers uh, in, and the posters. In, in, in those um, um, areas where there were particularly hotly contested races. Uh, the, the media owners in those areas are going to see between 45 and 60 percent increases in ad sales yeah. just from the election alone. Well, the I Green mean, Bay television stations have more money than the Packers now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, some of the printouts here are uh, from various different places. Ward 15 um, is probably complete. Uh, Doyle won handily, 56% to 41. Okay, there you go. Falk, 53% to 46, but let's switch over to Sheboygan Falls, wards one and two. Um, Doyle, 38%, Green, almost 60. Wow. Where, was that? Where was that? It says Sheboygan, Sheboygan Falls, Falls, wards Sheboygan one and two. Falls. Wow. One and two, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Falk, 37%, Van Hollen, 62%. Uh, I, I think that's that's very interesting. Aulik, um, 32 percent. Liveham, 67 percent. Okay. Aulik was very close in Ward 15, but just close, 49.4 percent to 50.6 percent. So, that's, I mean, that would be a more typical Democratic stronghold. Here we have Elkhart Lake coming in. Doyle, 44 uh, percent. Falk, 41 percent. Alec 39, almost 40%. Boy, um, Elkhart Lake is 40, 44% Doyle. That's interesting. I yeah. would think that that would be more skewed more Republican. Republican. Right, right. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, in the, well let's get some more numbers. Uh, yeah, things, things, keep, yeah. things keep piling in here. Um, we have um, Ward 3, my ward. Doyle, 55%. Falk, 54%. Uh, Aulik 47% with 52% for uh, Liveham. Uh, Terry Van Akron in all of these is winning handily. Well, uh, you know, <coughs> okay. Jose was under the radar screen until the debates. Right. And then you use, you know, when you're talking about family values, for better or for worse, if you're going to ride that sled, you can't use the word veto whore. <laughs> and that's just not going to work. I mean, that kind of is sending a little mixed message, I think, to the to your brothers and sisters well, in the queue. Well, I just thought it was just uh, <coughs> such an interesting phrase. I, don't, I, don't think, I, don't, I really don't think, and I really don't think that the ad, uh, it wasn't so much was racist, it was just so amateurish, <coughs> the amateur hour, that it just hurt him. Uh, I think it actually put him up and raised his visibility, or people almost started, started paying attention, saying, whoa, we don't really know much about I this I think, Ben, that's what really got him really on the map, was just I think that people were stunned at 
Yeah, amateurish is a good word that just you guys, you know, you can't come up come up with anything more sophisticated than that. Seventy-three to twenty-seven, Terry Van Akron. Okay. Okay. Are we getting? Um, this is Channel Four. Okay. We have a are little we, look at Channel Four. So are we getting any Kagan and um, uh, Guard numbers? Well, while, well, what, what, while I was gone, the numbers came in, and they were what? It was really early. Though. It was really early. It, Kagan okay. was up, but it was 51, very 51, early. 51, 49, something like that, yeah. yeah. Okay. The village of Adel went for Mark Green 61% and went for um, uh, J.B. Van Hollen 65%. So <coughs> Cedar Grove. Okay, is that 80%? <laughs> yeah. um, Doyle 22%. Yeah, right. I did better than Jim Doyle <laughs> in the village <laughs> of Cedar Grove. Oh my, Kathleen Falk 17%. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did, right. well, we, we won't go into that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, in any event, and there really weren't any other contested races uh, of any. Uh, of any size. And Waldo, 35% for Doyle, 62% for Green, Falk, 35%, Van Hollen, 64%. Those are deeply, deeply, deeply Republican numbers. Yeah. Is the county, I'm thinking the outlying county gets more and more conservative as time goes on. Yes. I don't remember the Those county being, bear that out. I don't yes. remember the county <clears throat> being that, that conservative. So, um, so those are interesting numbers. Ward 10 in the city of Sheboygan, typically a, a Democratic. 60% yeah, uh, for Doyle, 55% okay. for Falk, but only 46% for Olick. Well, only 46? Uh, yeah, 53% okay. for Liveham. For right. Do you no, have a Ward 1 and 2, just for the heck of it? That's yeah, well, um, no, we haven't gotten those yet. Okay. But the guys have been really good about bringing those in, so pretty okay. soon we'll, we'll have all of those. That's the northeast side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but Ward 3, my ward is typically fairly democratic. Right. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how would you mixed. characterize your ward? Yeah, it's, it's um, we are a heterogeneous uh, ward. I mean, all different kinds of housing and types of people and, and things like that. So, so it, uh, I, I, I just think that the county is getting more and more uh, conservative. Which I, is okay. There you I go. mean, you know, there there's, you some, go. there's some sanity going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're I mean, wearing black. How you look at You're it. wearing black. I know. I'm, wearing, I'm, I'm in way, mourning so. today, so that's <laughs> so we're gonna let him have his due. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Only fair. That's exactly. only fair. That's we'll only just fair. quietly hang our heads and say, "There yeah. you go." Congratulations yeah. to the Democrats. Uh, yeah. But it's not untypical. They said in the that Democrats in the third year of an election, or that there's a switch in in House seats and Senate seats. Well, you remember the uh, tearing of hair and the renting of clothing when uh, in the 94, uh, the 94 congressional oh, yeah. races. I mean, that was, that was That's terrible. when the Republicans had a message. They really, and nobody had a message this year. No. It was, I'm against Bush or you guys are rotten. Uh, where was the message? <laughs> Exactly. It was or the war. Get out of the war. That was it. The war. Yeah. No, I was just showing that with 22 percent statewide, that the Doyle was at 56 percent with 22 percent statewide oh, okay. reporting. But didn't that so show that um, that's pretty Van good. Hollen was winning? At 53 percent with 22 percent reporting. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, now Channel Four is projecting Doyle as the winner. All right. Okay. Not calling the race, but right. just yeah. projecting. Interesting. <laughs> okay. I would. 61 yeah. to 39 state oh, line. Yeah. With 20% in, well, and 61% already, yeah. yeah. That's a big so, number. Okay. That's interesting, and the death penalty as well. So Paul Ryan has uh, been um, projected the winner. Of course, that's, that's no surprise. Neither is Tammy Baldwin. She's oh. really become, I think, pretty entrenched um, in her area. And kind uh, I think, uh, as well. Well, yeah, the, the incumbents in Wisconsin, except for yeah. the Green Bay. Yeah, course, we'll see the Green Bay eight, one here. Sense and Brenner, yeah. yeah. Exactly. More coming up here. Exactly. Looking at the I should tell you that I got some writing votes for Congress. <laughs> Very good, Ken. Uh, you moment. did. Yes, I, I've been told that the individuals, because there's no challenger to uh, Congressman Petri. <laughs> so yeah. Some people wrote in my name. Right. So we really can't talk about that race because it would be a good Kagan at 52%, 35% reporting. 
Wow. Yeah. That's early yet. And that Reynolds. That's early. early. That's that real Tom early Reynolds yet. and Sullivan uh, race yeah. was really was pretty ugly. We have just well, five minutes left. Well, if Falk gets beat, if Falk gets beat, what is it? Just the the television ads portrayed her as well, you know opening up the prison doors, and we all were going to be knee deep in criminals. Well, people need to remember that the attorney general generally has no real role in well, law know. enforcement. Right. Exactly. I mean, you had. At Peg Lautenschlager going up north to try that case, but that was highly right. unusual. Well, it was such highly a, it unusual. It was such a highly, yeah, highly yeah. publicized case. Right. So, um, so that the best that you can really do with, um, I think, with an attorney general is to run a good crime lab, and I think that was a surprisingly vulnerable issue because, I mean, those are just services that get cut back when there's a budget deficit. You know, you just you get cut back, and that's. That's just the way it is. But that issue caught on with people, I think. And what happens though when Peg's out of the picture? You know, she's in charge of the crime lab. Now that you've got two newcomers, where does that issue go? You can't yeah. pin it on anybody. Yeah. yeah. And but I think he worked that at least a little bit. And yeah. I know that during the beginning of the real campaign, that was something of an issue. It's just one of those races that it's just if you're a traditional Democrat or a traditional Republican, it's just easy to vote the party. Right. Because if you're looking at it just on the outside very casually. You don't know what the attorney general does day to day. You know they're kind of involved in law enforcement, I think, but they're probably just people that want to be governor someday, and they have to do something before they can be governor. So, um, I don't think Falk counterpunched very well. No, uh, you know I hate to put it in those terms, and I don't like those the negative campaign ads. But well, she wasn't if you don't respond to it, though. yeah, I mean, exactly. She just wasn't. But I mean, I mean yeah, but I mean, <coughs> they, I think you have to make that case. You know, I think I was an executive. I ran Dane County. Right. I made budgets work, and she's done a great job. By yeah. all accounts, she's balanced budgets. She's made but difficult choices. But attorney generals don't do that. Right. I mean, they protect spotted owls and consumers right. from being ripped off. Right. And they yeah. do education, yeah. and they do right. you know yeah. a variety of other things, and those are just the things that they do. And mm -hmm. but you know, she worked in the attorney general's office for how many years as an assistant? Right. Doyle. Right, and, and she was a, she was a, you know, that got lost. Yeah. I mean, that, was, really a, that was something yeah, that she really could did. hang on her shoulders. Right. I'm knowledgeable about the office. Yeah. Right. It just didn't <laughs> seem like she put out there any kind of a clear message or, a, I agree. or clearly articulated her credentials. She just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Let me put you guys on the spot just as uh, kind of closing up arguments or closing up comments. What would you hope to see in the next two years? in terms of what your local and state and uh, national legislatures can do for us? That's a pretty broad question, okay. so well, take, yeah, a, and let's take be quick. a run and at we, it. And we have to be quick about it. And we've got four minutes. About four minutes. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, Ken will well, take I'll, three and a half I'll of take, those. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch, <laughs> take watch a Okay, <laughs> yeah. Locally, I think we need to uh, uh, come to an intelligent decision about uh, how much money we're going to spend on the police department. Here, here. And, and the second issue is we need to figure out how we're going to run the city um, without a tax increase, because that seems to be where we're going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those would, be, those, those would be the two big issues. Uh, statewide, I think we have to get real about the budget and figure out how we're going to resolve that same, the same. It's going to be budgetary issues and nuts and bolts issues. And, um, and I think that's the big big issue in Wisconsin. And, um, you know, gay marriage will, will go in the distance until the, the lawyers have at it with it. Uh, nationally, I think it's going to be what to do with the Bush tax cuts that they want to extend and the Democrats are going to be put in a bind about how they're going to handle that because if they, if those tax, if those are extended infinitely, this budget is going to balloon in the deficits as far as the eye can see at a very time we need surpluses for Social Security. I think uh, the Democrats and the, and the, and, the and, I, and I think we have to look at the Baker, the Baker uh, report that's coming out about what to do in Iraq. I think okay. those are going to be the two big issues. Well, that kind of covers the I mean, he territory. covers the gamut. I would, I would add, I wish our state legislatures, or I wish the state would take into look at shared revenue. We have too many governmental entities that eat into this pie, and Scott McCallum, bless his heart, he lost on that issue. He tried to tackle that issue to, to get local uh, municipalities and villages to, and townships to work together by cutting back on shared revenue. And, uh, but everybody complained, we want our money, we want our money, we want our money. Yep. <laughs> All right. And that's, a, that's what I would like, that's but tough. That, that's a tough one, it's right. the social security one. Okay, see if you can beat me now, Dave. Well, in, in succinctness. In, 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 in you addition, want peace on in, earth. in addition to the things that Ken <laughs> mentioned and Tom yeah. mentioned, healthcare. Um, 
on a national level and even a state level to a degree, and even on a local level. Um, and it's harder on a local level because it's, it's such a harder subject to get your arms around. But we've got to figure out a way that people can have reliable, affordable health care that's not going, you know, that, that any, any kind of a salary increase you get is already gone because you're going to see a double digit increase in your health care. Um, union, non union, whatever, it's irrelevant. Yeah. We've got to find a way to get health care. Uh, and, and, and it's the issue that everybody talks about that nobody wants to deal with. When's the last time you saw a politician truly deal with health care? They put all these proposals out, but when push comes to shove, they don't want to deal with it. So I think health care is a big one. Yeah. And I get to get off the hook because I'm going to spend our remaining few seconds just to thank some people. First, to thank Julie Glancy and their staff for opening up the um, lobby in their office and uh, make the voting process uh, a little more transparent for uh, Sheboygan County or the city of Sheboygan residents. I'd really like to thank the Channel 8 people. A little round of applause <laughs> as they hauled I'm endless myself, cable man. and uh, microphones and cameras and uh, uh, just really put themselves out uh, here to, uh, to have a, a live and online look, and so we want to thank you. David, thanks for joining the Looney Bin here. We, yeah, uh, yeah, it was we, fun. Uh, we can talk and talk and fun. talk. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and thank you to all of you for watching. If you've watched the whole hour and a half, we've certainly covered a gamut of issues and personalities and challenges, but the whole voting process really, in a nutshell, from my perspective, if you're talking patriotism, you're talking voting. And so for that, we thank you. Wow. And uh, we'll see you in uh, 08. <laughs>